Hello, everybody. This is going to be the drum leaf materials prep video. Um, so I've got some examples of the drum leaf book. This is one that we did in a class a few years ago. It has a bunch of lino cut prints in it. So the great thing about this book is, it, you know, it looks like you recognize, looks like something you recognize as a book. You can really make it any thickness. Uh, you can use any kind of paper in it. It can be a text weight. It can be sort of a stiffer leaf. Uh, so a, a stiffer paper, like a cardstock, it can be that. Um, but these are single sheets that are attached to one another in the back. And so they're doubled up right here. And there's almost like a little pocket in here where they're, because the, they're just attached at the fore edge here and at the spine. So uh, the way it works looks like this at the, at the spine where it opens. This is uncovered on this side. So you can kind of see the spine piece. And then the, there's a, a flange in here. I'll call it a flange that kind of holds the book together. These are the edges of the book that are covered, the corners, because if you don't put the cover on, if you don't cover the corners, you'll be able to see the board in there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's, that's raw board. That's like a white mat board. So that's showing the, and in this case, it doesn't look so bad, but you can imagine if this one wasn't covered, this one's covered in this kind of uh, hay colored book cloth, but you, could, you would be able to see uh, which said raw board right here at the spine if this wasn't covered. So you can see how that looks better like that. And then here's another one. This one has a lot of pages in it and we're not gonna do this many pages, uh, but you can. So I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna try to talk about this one. We're gonna make a certain size, but I wanna talk about it in a way that, so that you can understand how you could make different size books. All of these examples are our, the five and a half inch tall one that we're gonna make, that's like that. But then I have some little miniatures um, that I can show you. So this is like a little, it's a little baby one. So this is the size we're gonna make. And then this is just a little one where I had off cuts and I decided to make like a demo version. So this is the like the finished exterior with that spine, that's the other side. And it's attached on this side, but that is just double stick taped to the cover here. And then you can see here, that's the double stick tape. And I would just peel that, close the book, and it would be attached to the cover like that. So you can see it doesn't have a lot of drape. And it's, so it's a stiff leaf structure. Um, and it's called a drum leaf because of the way that it's tipped on. It's They are tipped together at the fore edge like that. And then, yeah, that's the one with a lot of pages. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I was showing you the small one. So that's the small one. And then here's one where um, it's half uncovered. So you can see you just, because this book's so small, it's like a little strip of paper that you would just barely cover the book cloth and then miter and turn in just at the edge here. And then here's one that has, it has the little extra pieces that will be the covers but the spine is not on there. So this is the spine piece that we're gonna make. And then this is the flange that attaches and glues. This one is made out of cambric, which is a sort of, it's a lining material mainly uh, used for conservation, but it is not, it's basically book cloth without any paper on it. So it's a, it's a linen or I think maybe cotton, cotton or linen, and you glue this on at the spine tightly like that. And so this is, sort of the unbound version. There's a corner that's covered and we're gonna do that step. Um, but you don't have to, you can leave raw board. It just doesn't look as good. So these things I'm showing you the pieces and they don't make a whole lot of sense right now because we haven't done it. So when you've done it, all of that is gonna make sense to you. It's kind of nice to be able to see these unfinished ones because then you can see all these pieces and how they come together. So it's like my little cooking show version of the ingredients halfway done and then the completed completed cookie or whatever it is. So, okay, I'm gonna set those to the side. And then I'm gonna talk about the materials that you need to pull together to make, uh, to prepare. So you're gonna have a handout like this. 
um, you guys might just pull it up on your computer as you're working and have a little checklist. The list that I've done for you guys does not look exactly like this one because you're not gonna be bringing materials to class and I'm gonna be giving you some of those materials and some you're gonna to have to um, bring yourself. All of this stuff needs to be stuff that you provide for yourself. Um, your printout doesn't have this part. It only has the materials part here. So you're only gonna see this illustration when uh, you look at the PDF. But this is really just a checklist of what you're gonna need. So you're gonna need the text pages and that can be the Mohawk paper if you got that, but you only need eight pieces and you need the five and a half by eight and a half wide and we're gonna fold it to five and a half by four and a quarter. So this is something we've already done. So I'm not gonna show like tearing that down, folding them into single folios. I mean, I'll, I will show that, but I'm not gonna talk about tearing down the paper and getting the eight sheets that you need because you can use what you want. I don't know how many people actually uh, purchase that Mohawk. It seems like people have, and maybe at least half the class has, but you can also use like a text weight paper or a cover stock. Like if you go to um, Office Max or whatever and get a, a thing of card stock, that would work as well. Um, and you'll have to figure out your grain direction and all that from those sheets, but you could get what you need out of it. So then you need end sheets and you're gonna need two sheets of the five and a half by eight and a half folded into the five and a half by four and a quarter wide uh, in sheets. So you need two color Canson sheets at that size. You're going to need some binders board that you're going to then cut out your two pieces, two boards of uh, five and a half by four and a quarter. That's the finished size of the book. So the finished size of the book is the same size as the text pages. And I'll talk about when I'm actually cutting the material, I'll talk about maybe making that just slightly bigger than the text block. Um, everything that you base your materials off of is gonna be based on the, the text block size. So whatever those folios are, that whatever size you decided to make them, that's what you would measure from to get the rest of your pieces. We're doing it to this five and a half by four and a quarter size, but you could do uh, something else later. So you need a spine piece and that's gonna be your, so there's the binders board, the Bristol card. It, yours may not look like this. It's basically like a white Bristol, this one has the grain direction drawn on there. I don't know if you can see that little line, but I told you how I do that with my materials. Lining materials, I mark them a lot so that I know what the grain is without having to flex it or do anything. So this is that Bristol card. It's kind of like folder card um, so that you're gonna need a little piece of that for the spine piece. Um, then it says on, the, on this list, it says cambric, but on your list, it should say mulberry or cambric. And what we're gonna use for this is because we don't have cambric, you guys don't have access to that. I didn't want you to have to buy any of that because you have to buy it a yard at a time and it would be way too much, way more than you needed. That's typically something that I would provide in the class. You can also use book cloth, but I think that we can get away with using um, mulberry paper. So you should, I hope everybody bought this because this is really necessary from here on out in the class for the two books that are gonna have these lining materials you really do need. Uh, Japanese mulberry. It's something that if you didn't order it from Dick Blick, you could probably, well, I can't promise you, but I think you could probably get it in town in Gainesville, but I don't, I can't guarantee that. Um, but so you're going to need a little piece for the spine and you're going to need a little piece for the flange. And you can, if you look at this illustration, which will be better illustrated on your handout, you'll see all of these little pieces that you're going to need. So just double check, just kind of go through the materials list. That's what I'm doing right now for you make sure you've got this stuff before you start sitting down to cut and do all of that. So, um, all right, so the cambric for the flange and the, and the that's gonna be mulberry for the flange and mulberry for um, the spine lining. So let me show you on this one, on this example. So the cambric is this, but the spine, little, little piece of Japanese paper fits right on the spine after we've uh, attached it, after we've kind of grouped our stuff together. We're going to lay on some glue and lay on a piece of Japanese paper. So then you'll have a piece like this that's a half an inch shorter or a, an inch shorter than the height of the text block total. And you're going to center that on there. But this is going to be a piece of mulberry and it just needs to be able to wrap across the spine and then maybe a half inch on each uh, side. And this is going to get glued on, but this is de detached for now. I mean, I'm kind of getting ahead. I don't know why I'm doing talking about these details. I'm just trying to 
will help you understand what you need and what you need it for. Okay, so the mulberry and then the paper covers, that's your, that can be your decorative paper. And you just need a piece that's big enough to cover your board. So something like that. And then it just needs to be like a half inch wider. So I give you the measurements. It should be seven and three quarters. That's an, an over approximation. You add, that's, that's more than you need, um, but that's fine. The height is seven and three quarters and the width is four and a quarter, which is the width of the boards. But as you can see, we're gonna slide it over to show the book cloth. So that'll leave us a little bit of overhang. So I usually do an approximate, you know, but the board width plus a hair, you know, plus a little more. Okay, so that's, you need two of those. And then you're gonna need your book cloth and that's gonna be for the spine piece. And that needs to be the same height as the cover paper. So that's seven and three quarters by three inches wide. And I just usually say three inches and then we're gonna trim it like we always do. And we've done that with the tunnel book when we made uh, the little cover, the case for that. Uh, it's a similar process. Okay, so we're, you're gonna gather up all of those materials and then we're gonna start uh, cutting stuff and then we're gonna put the book together. So you, another thing that you're gonna need, and I may not have any handy right now, but I will when I come back, when after I go get the materials and uh, get ready to do it. You will need binder clips, two of those just, you know, office binder clips. They're, they're usually black with a silver little uh, handle on them. You just need two of those because when we're putting the book together, that's what I uh, have you guys use for jogging up and holding in place while we're gluing. So um, I'm gonna go gather the rest of my materials. I think I pretty much got everything, but I kind of want to get my thoughts together too and uh, get ready to, to prepare the materials. So I'll get binder clips and come back and then we'll start cutting down our materials. Okay, be right back for that. Okay, binder clips. Uh, this is what I'm talking about and you should, you know, this is just a very ordinary thing to have at this point. Uh, you can also use um, clothespins, like wooden clothespins, that works great as well. They don't, they, they're they kind of better in a way because they don't hold as tightly as the binder clip does. And in a way you don't wanna pinch the book when we're gonna be gluing it. So if you have clothespins, I would actually opt for that. Or even like a chip clip, you know, I've never used that before. That's an idea. Like if you have those little chip clips that go on a bag of chips, when you're, you know, you've eaten a little bit out of them, but you wanna save them, you just chip clip it. Uh, those might be useful as well. So if you don't have these, if you don't happen to have binder clips, there's a couple other options, clothespins or chip clip. I actually think that might work great. So uh, if you need that, you probably have that. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna prep for, I'm gonna just set my materials down. Um, you're gonna prep the sheets that are just single folios folded in half. So I already have some kind of rough cut sheets and I just counted out eight of these. So this is that Mohawk paper. This actually might be 800 pound, 800, eight sheets of 100 pound uh, instead of 80, which is what I normally have you guys buy. So it's a little bit thicker, but it's not, it's still a text weight, but it's not quite as drapey maybe as the, the 80 pound text. So, but this is a hundred pound text. So now I, I know my grain direction that you can see it a lot on that sheet. It's hard to push this way, easy to fold this way. So I'm gonna just take each sheet single, one at a time and just fold those in half. And actually I don't really need to be that careful about it because I'm gonna cut these down. Oh, that one already had a fold in it, oh well. So I'm just gonna fold that in half and I'm not, I'm not even that worried if it's not exactly lined up because this is gonna get trimmed down to that five and a half inches tall by four and a quarter wide. So I've just gotta go through and fold these in half. Oh, see that's already got a fold in it. So I'm gonna just fold along the line. I don't know why, maybe I'd already started to do something with these sheets, who knows? There's another one that has a fold. <laughs> I don't know, but they, that's fine for my purposes, no problem. Fold on. I am trying to make sure that they're folded straight down here, but I'm not so worried about the fore edge. And that just happens to be because I've got these large sheets that I know I've got to get a smaller size out of. And if you tear down your mohawk into the eighths, which is how many sheets you can get out of it, 
uh, that are like nine by 12 or whatever they are, you will also uh, be able to just kind of rough fold them in half. And you also need to fold down your end sheets as well. So you're gonna have two of those. And I've got my paper sitting over here. Just gonna use this yellow. And so really in a way, all I need to know, let me check my grain here. Yeah, this is the grain. Really what I wanna know is that I have enough to get, uh, you know, I'm trying not to use a full sheet because I don't need to. I really just need this to be like six by nine, let's say, because that way I can get my five and a half by eight and a half wide out of that, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna allow a little bit more. So I could really, if I wanted, just go ahead and cut 12 at the height. So I'm doing stuff I like to do, which is kind of figure out paper and how much I can get out of things. So I'm gonna scoot this out of my way because this is my grain, okay? It's running like this and I know I can get a six and a six. So that's what I'm doing right now. If you uh, don't, aren't following that. So I'm just cutting the heights of two sheets out of this. So I'm gonna cut that 12. I feel like I'm, on, I'm not on the right line, but I think it is glue down here. Cut that. And now this piece is kind of scrap now. That truly is. I, I've gotten the most I can get out of this. So then I'm going to cut that six. And this is way wider than I need it to be, but I don't care about that. I'm going to go ahead and just fold it in half. Because all I need to know is that it's big enough for me to get that four and a quarter out of, and I know it is. So I'm just going to fold this in half. And I know that looks nuts. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's not, you're gonna be like, well, that, your pages aren't the same size. And it's okay, because I know what I need to get out of them. So this is gonna be my end sheet on each end. And this is my text block here, okay? But all I know is that this book is smaller than that. So I still have plenty of room to cut my height out of that. So that's why I'm not worried about it. I know I've got enough to cover what I need. So I'm just gonna set that to the side. And now I'm gonna cut the boards. So these are gonna be five and a half inches tall. So let me check my grain, it's got a mark on there. It's running like this. And I know I can get two boards out of that. And it's gonna be five and a half inches tall by four and a quarter wide. So for this, I'm gonna actually make a little bit of a tick mark. I'm not gonna use the board. I'm not gonna use my cutting mat to measure. I'm gonna actually use a ruler because I wanna make it a little bit wider than four and a quarter. So what I could do is four and a quarter and like almost tick mark outside of that line, just right on the outside of it. And then do the same thing a little bit up from that. Just tick mark outside of the line. And then I can measure from here to the other four and a quarter. And then find my mark and measure to the other four and a quarter for the second board. And again, I'm just trying to mark outside of that line a little bit. And then here at five and a half, I'm going to, I'm gonna lay it on the line here, but then up here, I'm actually gonna mark on top of the ruler, just right over it so that it's slightly taller. And especially since we're cutting stuff by hand, I guess I feel like I really do want to make or allow for some kind of wonkiness if, if everything's not perfectly, perfectly straight. Um, okay, so now, oh, I lost my tip mark. I do that all the time. Oh, there they are. This mark looked like a tip mark and it wasn't. So I'm going to cut the second set of marks and I'm going to lay my ruler right on those tip marks and then cut kind of on, right on top of it. And this board I got to cut a few times like that and then I can cut my height make sure I didn't cut off the tick marks but I didn't so I'm laying on top and you can do that thing where you uh, stick the knife in the mark and then line up the other side and that now I'm cutting my height
can't, I probably can't get maybe one board out of that, but that's kind of useless to me. So I don't know. I might hold on to it just in case I have another piece that I could match with it. So now I'm just cutting the, the second four and a quarter. There's my boards. One of these looks a little bit bigger than the other one. It's very slight, very, very slight. It's like a hair. So if I felt like I needed to, I could trim this one down. is unnecessary <laughs> you don't need to do this if, if, if they're a hair too big just don't worry about it it's not a big deal but I did it okay so now uh if you have that five and a half by four and a quarter board that we made back when we were making like the first thing we folded and and trimmed this would be a good time for that board I'm not sure I have it as much as I told you guys to hold on to it. Hold on, I'm gonna uh, pause for a second and come back because I think I still have this and I've just misplaced it. So let me, um, let me go find my five and a half by four and a quarter or I might just cut a new one. I'll be right back, let me pause. Okay, I found it, the five and a half by four and a quarter board. So this is the one that we made uh, back when we were doing the pamphlets to trim down our sections. And so these are my two boards that I'm gonna use for the book and I, have the five and a half by four and a quarter already written on here so if I check it against it should be slightly smaller and it is not much smaller it's like just like a fingernail width right there and the height is the same it's just a little bit shorter than the two boards I prepped to use as the cover and that's all I want it's just, so this is not if we were cutting stuff with a cutter I would say this is not as important Although I do tell people when they're cutting their boards for the book to make it slightly larger. Uh, Cause I just think it looks a little bit better if the boards are, just a, this is a good one, like a tad larger. I don't know if you guys can see that. Just a tad lar taller than the text block, a tad wider that you can really see it at the width, tad wider. Um, but like this one is very flush, which is not bad, that's great. And that's cause it was done with a cutter and so it's really clean and this one, this side's just not covered. So this, the, the cover, when we wrap it, it actually adds a little bit of thickness anyway. Um, so you can just use your boards to cut your sections and it's gonna be very flush. If you want, you can cut them a little bit smaller with that five and a half by a four and a quarter. Uh, that's gonna make them just slightly smaller than the boards that we prepped. So it's up to you. If you can't find that board and you're just like, forget it, I'll just cut them, you know, however. That's fine too. Um, so what we're getting ready to do is use this to cut our sections down. This is another one where, well, because we're only cutting one sheet, I'm not as worried. Remember how, when I, first, I showed you guys, we were using something like a book or whatever to jog up against, and you can do that again and lay your sheet, your board on top of that sheet and then move this and then cut but you can also just line it up because there's no puffiness in there. This is just a folded sheet of paper. Um, I, I think you can just press down and kind of look, make sure it's lined up and trim. So I'm not as worried about squaring it up against something, but if you feel good about that and you like that process and want to do it that way, if you felt like it was giving you the look and finish that you want, then go ahead and grab a book or something like a board, because I was using a board before um, and you can do that. But I'm gonna do it manual, cause why not? We've been doing everything else manually. So, so I'm just cut, I'm doing the process we've already done. That's why I'm not really spending a whole lot of time talking about what we're doing. Cause you should know, kind of recognize this from the other stuff that we've done. So I've got the folded edge is on the left and then I'm cutting my sheet. And again, you just need to make sure you've got a sharp knife so that you won't get torn edges and stuff like that. 
So that's what I did is just cut that first one out like that. So that's one. And now I'm just gonna go through the stack of eight and cut each one. And I'm not even really worrying because see how much excess I have? Whatever, uh, you know, that's not a problem. And I'm just gonna cut each one. A better, I, my knife is sharp, but it's, it could be, for, it's not fresh. Let me put it that way. It's got some use out of it. So I'm having to cut maybe two or three times before I get all the way through. So that's two. Well, actually that's one text plant, one in sheet and one uh, text folio. Kind of got off my cut there. Tore it just a tiny bit. Just make sure that you're not cutting your folded edge. And I'm just pushing to the board, pushing against the board with the blade. So I'm just adding my stack over there on top of the board. And I hope you guys do have that five and a half by four and a quarter piece for the next book that we do. Oops, talking and cutting at the same time is not the best. Um, for the multi-section flat back, I'm just gonna talk about this. Uh, you will need this five and a half by quarter, uh, four and a quarter because we are gonna cut our text block to that size. And uh, our boards will be a different size. They cannot really get even close. They have to be uh, <laughs> taller and thinner, believe it or not. They're gonna be a little narrower. So you really do need this five and a half by four and a quarter piece uh, for next time. So if you don't have it and if, if you're not that interested in using it for this project, you're still gonna have to have it for the multi-section flat back. So you might want to consider making one soon, if not now, soon, because you're going to need it if you can't. Or look around. Maybe you didn't. Hopefully you guys didn't throw it away. Stuck it under something. It should be around. Couple more to do. Okay. And then the last end sheet. You can see what I'm talking about now. Like I just needed enough material uh, to be able to trim this out of it. So I just did it, you know, a, a half inch larger, taller, and then it was way too wide and that's fine because we're trimming it out. 
So you can see how really any sheet of paper you have would work. That if you, as long as you can fold it in half and it's bigger than your finished size, you can trim it down uh, to, the, to the size that you need. Okay. So that's the text block materials are prepped there. Okay. And then let's see the rest of it. Get this out of the way. Let's look at our checklist. Text pages and sheet pages. Binders board we got. Okay, so now we need the spine piece, the cambric and the liner. The, that's not listed separately, but we do need a piece of uh, cambric or the mulberry. We're mo using mulberry for both of these pieces, the, the lining, the spine lining, and then the piece for the hinge. So that is on our little sample spine lining that gets glued directly to it. And then this is gonna be what we use to a little sheet of mulberry. So we'll prep that. Then we need the paper covers and the book cloth. Okay, so we're like halfway there. So I'm gonna set this five and a half by four and a quarter to the side so that I don't mix it up with uh, my boards because I don't wanna accidentally switch them out because it is a little bit smaller. Okay, so the next piece is the spine piece. So for that, actually what I wanna do is just make sure I have a piece that's gonna, that I can cut we're not gonna cut it until we have the book together because you have to measure from the book to get that piece cut. And the piece I'm talking about, you can see this is like one that had been drawn on. That's just a piece of board that had, it's a folder card that was a scrap that had some doodles on it. So that's what that is, but that's, a, that's, that's the spine piece there, that little strip right here. So I just need, and that's for that little book. So I just need to know that, okay, it's tall enough. Bring stuff in the camera. Uh, it's tall enough, wait, it's, you know, an inch taller than I need. And then I can certainly get, you know, even just looking at that, even roughly, I have way more width than uh, is going to be required for that. But it's probably going to be more like this, you know, as a spine piece size. So we're, we're not going to worry about it. Just as long as I have the material, that's what I want to know. And you don't need a very large piece. This is just happens to be cut to that size. And I'm just going to set that to the side, knowing that that's what I have. Uh, the Japanese paper, throwing stuff around, it gets lost. Okay, so this is the mulberry. So for this, we need a five and a half inch high by two inch wide piece. Four and a, quarter, four and a half. Oh no, I was looking at the spine piece. That's sorry. I'm, re I'm reading off of this handout. Uh, four and a half inches high by two inches wide. Okay, so that's the cambric piece. And so I will go ahead and just cut that. So I'm gonna find a straight edge. If I don't have a straight edge on this, let me make sure, let me double check my, cause on this piece, it's actually kind of hard to find the grain direction. It's this because it's just easy and it wants to fold this way. Whereas when I was trying to go this way, it doesn't, it's very crinkly and resistant. So that's not the grain, it's this. So if I don't have a straight edge, I can just real quick clean up that wobbly edge. Now this is, is important to have a sharp knife. The thinner the paper, the more easily you can tear it with your knife. It, it kind of, it's not logical when you say it but, it, but that is the deal. Okay, so we're gonna do a two inch wide piece Sometimes I measure from the inch in so I can come to the mark. I mean, it doesn't have to be two. You could do three, um, but I think two is wide enough for what we're doing here. And then the height is four and a half. So when you're making, let me show on that little sample again. When you're making this little flange piece, it's gonna get glued down. You just don't want it to touch or be close to the edge, the head and the tail of the book. So you just make it an inch shorter. And in this case, I just kind of eyeballed it being shorter because it's such a small book. It's almost like a miniature book. Um, but for this, you know, I'll just cut it an inch shorter. Some glue on my finger or something. Uh, like an inch shorter than the height of the book because it's gonna sit in there about where my fingers are. It's gonna wrap over and it's gonna be nowhere near the head and tail if it's an inch shorter. Okay, so that's why we're doing the four and a half inch height. So 
So I'm going to do five and a half. And I'm just going to, I'm going to do it just like above. So I can make two lines across like that, just above the ruler. Oh, wait, I was doing five and a half. Well, that's not what I want to do. Trying to be cute. Trying to be cute. Let me erase those marks. <laughs> it needs to be four and a half. And I was trying to use the one inch again mark. But this I'm going to do like, because I only want to quick. This is a lining. This is something inside the book. So I'm not being maybe as careful, careful as, you know, I would be if it were going to be something I see on the outside. Okay. And then just cut across that. So this is going to be the piece that I use around the spine. And I might even write that. I'm going to put cambric on it because that's what I call it is the cambric flange but it's not cambric this is the mulberry flange but um, and then I need a piece of the lining <laughs> and again this is like when we cut the spine piece that spine piece that's going to go onto the book we sort of can't do that until we have the book because we don't know how wide it's going to be but we can go ahead and cut just like a little chunk of this so we know it's going to be five and a half inches because this is what we're going to be putting the spine lining on. This is when this is all put together, we're going to put the spine lining right on those folded edges as a group. And so we know it needs to be the same height of the book, which is five and a half. Um, so we can we can know that, but we also don't know the width until we put the book together. So I'm just going to cut off like a little chunk more than I need. It's about an inch wide, let's say. And I'm just going to cut that off. And that's what I'll use when I'm going to do the spine lining, when I'm going to put it on as I make it. So this is just kind of gathering the materials that we're going to use and setting them to the side. So that's the mulberry done. Okay, there's my, my spine piece and the cambric, which was the mulberry here, and then the spine lining piece. Okay, so I'm going to set this stuff over all together, the boards and everything. And then we'll go, th I'll go through it one more time uh, so you can see everything together. Um, so now I need the cover paper for this. And again, I can't, what, sometimes what I do is I'll just check and make sure. So like, I only have this little piece right here and then this whole sheet here. Like that's, cause I've already cut stuff out of it. I, I wanna see if I have enough to get uh, this out. And I, that is plenty to turn over head and tail. You need at least a half an inch, but I was saying uh, the seven and three quarters uh, and that that would be like this tall, an inch and a half taller than the board. So right now this is only about an inch taller. So if I did another half inch about where my finger is, that's how much I would have. And then I'd have a, a good three quarters to turn in, but I don't have to have that. Sometimes, especially when you've done it a lot, you kind of get, used to the idea of, oh, okay, wait, I, I don't have to have a lot of excess, I, but I need something to cover the edges and make sure that I can turn it over. So because of that, um, I'm going to cut my height just from this little piece. And then the width is supposed to be uh, four and a quarter wide. So the width of the board. So what I could do, and I often do this, is I could just use the board as my cutting tool because this is gonna get turned in at the edge. Um, but if I also felt uncomfortable with that, <coughs> I could also just cut five, let's say. So then I could put it, and again, I'm a little less strict about it being perfect because I know this is gonna get turned over and you're not gonna see the edges. So even up here, if you look, you might be able to see that that's a little bit of a rough edge where I tore the sheet in half. But because I know that's going to get turned in, it's not, you're not going to see this edge. So I'm not going to, it's clean enough. It's not like it's super raggedy and messy. So I'm going to go ahead and take my height as the finished height instead of doing the seven and a half just to spare and save my materials. So I'm going to cut five inches just, just to allow myself a little excess just in case uh, something's off when, oh, now that's how dull your knife is. Wow. <laughs> I need to change the blade because that's bad. All right, come back and cut again. I just kind of cavalier. All right. And then again, five inches here. 
wires on it down. Um, five inches wide. So I'm at five, I'm gonna measure over to 10 and cut that. And again, I'm just allowing myself a little bit of width because what if I only wanna show a slim amount? This is what, let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I cut my, my paper to this width, I have plenty of excess because I'm gonna pull it over that much, okay? And then the turn in on the back that you can't see it because it's closed. Let's see if the side, they're both closed. Uh, but let's, you can't even see it underneath because it's not glued down. Um, but the turn in would be, you know, half an inch at least, if not more, because I allowed this much book cloth to show. But like on this one, for example, where it's it's small, that's only like a quarter inch maybe. If I only cut it to the, the, what, the width of the board here, I might not have enough to turn in. And that would be a problem. So think, kind of think in advance of how much book cloth you might want to see. And this is sort of an advanced process of thinking ahead when you haven't done something. But we have made a case. We have made a case where uh, we showed book cloth on the spine. And you know that when you slide that over, you're going to then wrap around and whatever you turn in on the inside is what's going to. But you need to have enough because you don't want to just be barely overlapping the board. Then you have nothing to glue down. And, it, and you could also, your paste down might not cover it up or something, and then it's a mess that you can't really correct. It's hard to correct. Um, so just be aware about this. That's why I'm cutting them a little bit larger. If you look, like this is one of my boards. Sometimes what I'll do is just kind of lay my board on there and go, okay, I've got plenty to turn in. Really, this one's going to be, you know, whatever the book cloth is here. And I've got, I've kind of got too much, but that's okay because I'd rather have too much than not enough. So I just want to, I didn't want you guys to get caught if you decide to make a little slim uh, book cloth exposure, then you don't have enough material. So that's why I suggested the five instead of the four and a quarter, the board width. Okay, so this is our cover paper and the boards. Last thing we've got to cut is the book cloth. So move this out of the way. And I'm going to use, this is actually already pretty prepared. So I think this is probably what I'm going to use for the book, this green, but I'm going to prep. So I'm going to put that up to the side because that, if you look at this, this is basically what we need to cut. Three inches wide, approximately, it's rough. And then seven and a half inches tall. So it's actually too tall. So I could cut that off. I'm just put laying it on my board and then I could square this up. But the thing is, we're going to trim this. And so that's why I'm kind of, again, you know, with materials that I know are going to get trimmed, I'm being a little more cavalier about how I get the material out of the bulkier piece. So that's what I'm going to use, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the prep of um, the book cloth. So I was just checking that. I already had a mark on it, just double checking that the grain direction is long. So this, I'm going to cut a little, that seven and a quarter by three inches wide chunk out of it. And maybe I'll change my mind by the time I get to it. So I'm just laying this on. Let me pull it down. That's the camera. Again, I'm it's not a true rough cut because I am using the lines and the grid of, of the of the mat. So I'm cutting it three inches wide. This is way taller than I need for sure. I'm just cutting that three inches width. Change your blade. <laughs> Not fun to have that dull knife because it's annoying. Okay. And then because this got a little weird fold in it, I'm going to turn it this way and cut the seven and a half. And I could, you know, well, this, uh, I'm getting ahead and I'm thinking about stuff that I actually do. Sometimes I do that instead of teaching, you know, first time stuff. So seven and, and three quarters is what, or seven and a half. That's fine. Seven and a half, seven, seven and three quarters. It just needs to be taller than the board and have enough excess to turn over head and tail. So I am really being generous with that height just so that uh, you guys have enough material. So that's a piece I can use this on another book. That's why I went ahead and prepped it, even though I want to for this book, I just want to use that green because I used this already with this and just to have fun. I'm going to use this one. 
Um, and that's not straight, but I'm not going to worry about it because I want to, I'll show you later that it won't make a difference. So, okay, we've prepped, we've cut everything. We checklisted down text pages and pages, binders, boards, fine piece, the cambric and mulberry lining, uh, the paper covers and the book cloth. So let's go through one more time. So text pages and in sheet pages. That's done here. Got them. Eight of the text pages and two in sheets. There, done. Finders board, two boards, slightly larger than the text block if you want. A ba basically five and a half by four and a quarter, but slightly larger. Fine piece. All I needed is to have the material knowing that I'm going to cut that when we get to it. Okay, so that's my folder card and that's done, or the Bristol. That's the spine piece. Uh, then the cambric. I have a cambric, I'm calling it cambric, but it's the mulberry. This is mulberry paper. Cambric is the material that we don't have and we can't use this time, but this is fine for this. Japanese paper flange, Japanese paper spine lining. Th that's in your handout, just not in mine, but you'll see that. And then we have the paper covers, two of those. And then the last thing is the book cloth. So you should have this stack of materials uh, ready to go. And then we will put the book together in the next video. All right, so here's your materials list. Make sure, I, I really like to do this, especially when I'm learning something for the first time to have that materials list and be able to check and make sure that I have all my pieces because then I'm not scrambling around and having to you know, find stuff. It's just ready. You're, you've got a little kit kind of, you're prepping the kit, but it's a kit ready to go. Okay, so this is the drum leaf materials prep. Next is going to be the drum leaf book, making the book. Okay, all right, thanks.